I'm Aaron Coleman. This weekend marks four years since Philly's great Darren Dalton passed away from an aggressive form of brain cancer. Well, now a foundation in his memory is working to help others suffering from similar illnesses. And here to talk more about that effort, former Phillies pitcher Don Carmen. Don, of course, was a teammate of the man who was affectionately known as Dutch. Don, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. It's good to be here, Aaron. You know, um, you and, and Dutch, came up to the big leagues together with the Phillies, but you were more than teammates. We know you were very, very close friends. Uh, fans saw him on the field, but tell us about the man that you knew off the field and in the clubhouse. You know, Darren was very special, and anybody that spent any time with him knew that and felt it right away. He could feel, he would fill a room with just, with just love. Not just, not just, oh, you know, I'm your friend or whatever. I can tell you, it didn't matter whether you were the owner of the team, the manager, or all the way to the ground crew. Everyone there knew they felt that love, and it was it was genuine. And everybody felt like they were really close to him. It, it, it's a very unusual thing that he had, that and, and and by far the the best leader I've ever been around. It didn't matter if you needed to be picked up or maybe even, you know, you shake you up a little bit and, and make you angry or sometimes just calm you down. He, he was able to do that. In one particular instance, we were I was pitching in Pittsburgh and we were down. I was down four to nothing in the first inning and I hadn't gotten anybody out yet. And Barry Bonds had just hit a double off a double off the wall. He's standing on second base, and the umpire handed Darren um, um, a baseball. And I'm, I'm so upset, I can't even breathe. I'm so mad. And I'm thinking, just throw the ball to me. Just throw the ball. And, and, and Darren held, held the ball up in front of him, and he wouldn't throw it. He just stood there looking at me. And then he started walking out, and I went oh, to myself, and said, he's not going to throw it. I got to wait till he walks all the way out here. I'm getting madder every time. <laughs> Right. I'm just getting madder and madder. And it's like, oh, finally, I, I, I think instead of having my glove up for him to throw it, I finally turn it over. He's right in front of me. He's on the dirt. And he holds it up slowly. He puts it down into my glove and says, I don't know what you're doing out here, but it's not working. Right? <laughs> what? <laughs> right? And I stepped back and I said, I know it's not working in my head. Wow. And he just turned around and walked away. And then I thought, what am I doing? And I said, well, I'm going to do the opposite, right? And I changed it. I went seven innings, lost four to three, was the only runs I gave up. But what he did was make me, you're not thinking. I want you to start yeah. thinking. And, and he just, and it's just one example of what he would do. And then another time he might come out there and, scold you or but it, he knew how to handle handle a staff he just and he knew people when he became sick with glioblastoma he was able to afford uh, the best care find the best care available obviously but not every family is as fortunate and that's where obviously his foundation comes in um, can you talk about why the work that the foundation does is so important well, anybody that um, has experienced the, these kind of uh, this kind of illness uh, would understand. It's it's devastating. It's devastating, and uh, you know, obviously, emotionally, and to the families, and to obviously the 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 victims. Uh, but it's damaging financially, like you said. I mean, some most people can't afford to do you know to deal with this, and you're not just dealing with. Uh, you know, your doctor bills and your meds, you, you have to travel. You travel because there are specialists around the nation that you have to travel. You may have to travel every week and then you have to get a hotel. You have to. All these things cost so much money. This is what the foundation, what Darren and his wife, Amanda, started this foundation for that reason. All right. So so how can people help the foundation? What can well, people at home do right now? You go to the Darren Dalton Foundation it's uh, the website, and it's so simple. You can you can make a one-time donation, or you can be a monthly. You can do whatever you like with it. It's very simple. It was simple enough for me to do it, so I know everyone else can do it. So your best way is to do that. That's going to be the easiest way for you to donate to this. 
and to and to help the cause. Yeah, you can help so many, and it is such a worthy cause. Don Carmen, thank you so much for joining us to talk about your friend, Darren Dalton. We really appreciate your time today. Thanks, Aaron. Um, I thank you for the uh, opportunity. For more information on the Darren Dalton Foundation, just go to our website, NBC10.com slash find it on 10.